Reactions in water are a very important branch of chemistry. So let's first talk about our favorite solvent, which is water. Very common solvent and a few characteristics of it. Number one, it is made up of covalent bonds. And oxygen, which is obviously a part of it, is very electronegative. In fact, second to fluorine, it is the um, second most electronegative atom on the periodic table. And water has a bent shape. Okay, so it is bent. The water has, the oxygen has two lone pairs on it. And because oxygen is so electronegative, this side of the molecule is partially negative and the hydrogen sides are partially positive. So we can write that with the little deltas. We can also indicate that directionality with uh, an arrow going from the positive side of the molecule to the negative side of the molecule. Okay, so we also say that it's polar because it has this net dipole um, and we say it has a dipole moment. So the charge is not, not distributed evenly. Um, incidentally, if such a thing as linear water existed, which it does not, then it would not be polar. Okay, linear water would have the um, two bond polarities cancel each other, and it would not be polar. But keep in mind that this is, does not exist. Okay, so a lot of the chemistry involves things dissolving in water. Ionic compounds, some of them do dissolve in water. And some of them do not. So just because it's ionic doesn't mean it dissolves. For molecular compounds, some dissolve and some do not. So you can't tell what's going to dissolve by whether it's ionic or molecular. Um, and we're going to discuss which kinds dissolve and which kinds don't, starting with ionic compounds. OK, so when ionic compounds do dissolve, they separate into ions. And another word for that is to say that they dissociate. All right, and then when they do that, then each separate ion, whether positive or negative, gets surrounded by water molecules. Okay, and we see that they are solvated by the water molecules. All right, and the way that looks, if you take a um, Look down below. If you take a sodium chloride, a solid sodium chloride, and put it in water, you get sodium plus, and you get chloride. And those the sodium plus will be in water, the chloride will be in water, and they will be surrounded by water molecules, but they will be pointing different directions. Since the sodium is positive, then the more negative side of the water will aim toward it. Okay, so there will be waters around the sodium ion, but all of the oxygens will be facing toward that sodium because they are the more negative part. They'll be attracted. The opposite occurs at the chloride. The chloride will attract the more positive side of the molecules. So the hydrogen side of the molecules will face toward the chloride. So they face a different way. And these are solvated ions. So around each ion in solution, there will be a, a solvation sphere of water molecules. All right, another property of soluble ionic compounds is they conduct. They conduct electricity. We call them electrolytes. which are substances that will conduct. 
in water. All right, so I've talked about sodium chloride dissolving, and when that happens, you get sodium and chloride ions. You get two moles of ions per mole of sodium chloride because each one divides into two. Okay, but when sodium sulfate dissolves in water, you get two sodium ions and you get a sulfate ion as well. So for every mole of sodium sulfate, you get three moles of ions. All right, so those, that's what happens when they, when they dissolve. Ionic compounds dissolve, they get solvated, they divide into however many ions there are. And then remember, some ionic compounds are not soluble. And the way you can tell which ones are going to be, um, dis which one will dissolve and which ones will not, is by looking at tables. of them, which we will do later. All right, let's go on to molecular compounds. Remember, some of those dissolve and some don't. The ones that will dissolve are ones that are similar to water in their polarity. So polar molecules dissolve, especially if they are small polar molecules. And that's because Water itself is polar, and we use the phrase, like dissolves like, which is very handy for determining if something will dissolve in something else. When you have a polar substance, polar molecules will dissolve in it. When you have a nonpolar substance, nonpolar molecules will dissolve in it. Okay, but when they do dissolve, when molecular compounds dissolve in water, they don't dissociate. for most cases. And the exception is acids. Acids will dissociate. Okay, so for the most part they are non-electrolytes and they don't which means they don't conduct. And again, the exception is acids. Okay, so let's look at a few specifics. When you take a sugar molecule, C12, H22O11, that's solid, take sugar, solid sugar, put it in water, stir it up, it will dissolve. You know that, you've put sugar in water. But it doesn't dissociate. Okay, so you still have a sugar molecule, it's just that it's now dissolved. It does not turn into any ions or break up in any way. Ethanol, another molecular compound, all Non-metals, no polyatomic ions, so you know it's um, molecular. It becomes an aqueous form. It starts liquid, dissolves in water, but it's aqueous form. All right, acids are the exception. When you put hydrochloric or HCl in water, you will get ions, and they will also be aqueous, um, but it does dissociate into ions. All right, and then nonpolar molecules. Will not dissolve. They are not enough like water to dissolve in it. And examples, important examples are hydrocarbons. Pure hydrocarbons that are made up of carbons and hydrogens only, such as C2H6. All right, let's talk about ions again and different types of ion equations. So we have three different types of ionic equations we're going to talk about. The first is the molecular equation, and that is the one we've been talking about so far, where you list molecules and their states, um, reactants, and products. Okay, so these are the ionic compounds. 
that are going to dissolve and dissociate. And the fact that they have an AQ written after them means that they are dissolved. Okay, if they did not dissolve, they wouldn't say AQ. Okay, when you put these together, though, they form some things that's not aqueous. It's solid, and that is a precipitate. And then it also forms um, another substance that actually dissolved. This is dissolved. Um, the AQ is broken off there. It's AQ. Okay, so this one is dissolved and dissociates too. Okay, so it's another ionic compound. So there's three ionic compounds in this equation and one, um, well, they're all ionic compounds, but there's three that dissolve. Okay, this one, this one, and this one dissolve, whereas this one is solid. That means it does not dissolve. Okay, so we can, since they dissolve and we know they dissociate, we can write them as though they're dissociated, write them in separate um, pieces. Okay, so we have from this first compound, we have silver nitrate. We know that in, in solution, it's actually two silver ions. Whoops. Okay, I don't know what we're doing here. Okay, so we have two silver ions, and then we have the two nitrate ions. Oops, sorry, that's a minus. I'll write that again. Okay, so this compound was dissolved into two pieces. We know it's two pieces. This one is also, since it's aqueous, is in two pieces, more than two pieces. And those are both aqueous. Didn't leave room for that. Um, and then we'll do an arrow, and we'll write the rest of it down here. Um, the solid precipitate you can't does not dissolve, so it does not separate into ions, so it still looks the same way it does above. But we know this one dissolves, so it's also separated into ions. Okay, so there's the total ionic equation. Everything that's soluble in the molecular equation is now split up into ions. All the ions are made that can be. All right, but if you look at that, you'll notice there's some things that are on both sides of the arrow. Okay, there are two sodium ions on both sides. There are two nitrate anions on both sides. So since they're the same on both sides, that means they didn't do anything in the reaction. They're just watching. We call them spectators. and we call them spectator ions. They did not do anything in the reaction. They are unchanged in the reaction, so they aren't really actually part of the reaction, which means we can use write the rest of it, the part I did not underline, as the net ionic equation. Okay, the two silver ions, the chromate ion forming the precipitate. So there's our net ionic equation. So three types of equations, total molecular, where they're written as molecules, net ion, or total ionic, which has all ions that are soluble separated, and then net ionic, the things that actually change during the reaction. Okay, time for your turn. Try this. Write the net ionic equation and spectator ions for this reaction. And I would suggest you write the total ionic equation before you try to write the net ionic equation. All right, so the total ionic equation would be take all the aqueous substances and separate them into ions. You have two sodiums, and I'm going to leave the, the, the states off just for simplicity. 
and you know the charges of zinc because you know the sulfate charge. Okay, this one's solid, so you can't separate it, but this one is aqueous, so you can. All right, so we will then underline the things that are on both sides, sulfates, sodiums, two of them, and what's left over is our net ionic equation. Which is sulfide plus zinc ion going to zinc sulfide. And the spectator ions Alright, what was that? Then our sodium and sulfate. 